Oh, my father. Okay. Mm. Good evening, saints. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, those of you joining us via the stream right here in our blessed twin island of Trinidad and Tobago. And we got on, came on a little bit late, about how much, about almost 10, 10 minutes uh, late this evening. It's good to be with you again today. Another day, another wonderful day. Another day that the Lord has made. And I trust that you had a wonderful day for the most part of the day and that the rest of it will be wonderful as well. All our brethren from Canada, St. Lucia, Trinidad and Tobago, the United States, um, in the Caribbean and wherever you are connecting with us, it's an honor to be in your space this evening. And so we are on a journey. And it's a wonderful journey. Uh, it's a glorious one. And I'm thankful to the Lord for helping us to understand what the journey is all about. And the whole, the process of this life that we are engaged in, we are called upon to engage in. And the goodness of God walking us through helping us to understand what we are in, what it's all about, and where we are going. And walking through this time space in step with the instructions of the Lord, moving us forward into what we were destined to be, so that we can do what we're supposed to do. Oftentimes we focus on the doing and not the being. And we look at that at another time because you can only be before you do. So we had it the other way around. So God is helping us to understand these things as well. So Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we gather in your name, Lord Jesus. Heaven's sound is what your church needs. For it is the best song, Father, It is the best song and only you can communicate it in a way that we all will understand it because you are the one who opened the scriptures and helps us to understand it because you're the author of it lord and so now in jesus name we're here oh god all that i've asked you all the requests that i've brought before you that i know does not have a shelf life I thank you for looking into them. I thank you for acknowledging them. And I thank you for having your way in the midst of all that has been brought before you. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Master. I depend on your guidance. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Kimo Tasha Mando Rotike. Hey, Kirada Bosaki in Daramanda. He's here right now. <laughs> He's here. He's here right now. He's here right now. Glory to God. He's here right now. And he's here right now. It's a wonderful joy whenever he, when I just the knowledge of that, it, it's so relaxing and so, so wonderful. Good. So, um, <laughs> yes, my Lord, this is good. Um, so good. Amen. Oh, Last week we. We, we understood some things that is very vital to our progress as children of God, as individuals. And they are meant to cultivate in us the mentality um, that takes us into the fullness of the path that the Lord has shown us by the light that he has shone 
in the midst of our dark and understanding, now we know where we're going. And we are beginning to understand, uh, even though it has been in the scriptures for years, Holy Spirit is showing us that um, there's an eternal plan and there's a process that has been arranged by God. He arranged the plan, he arranged the process, he arranged the goal and the process that leads to the goal. And only the Holy Spirit can guide us there. We can't imagine it, assume it. No one else outside of the influence of the Holy Spirit can tell us anything about it. Because if they attempt to, they will only be sharing what their thoughts are as opposed to what really is. So Holy Spirit who has authored the scriptures gives us understanding of all of these things. So we understood that we are transitioning and that is not just a geographical move. It is internal. It is based on the revelation that God has given to us. To each understanding, it creates in us a desire to want that place that he shows us or the light that he brought to us to be that which we are walking in. So the light that he gives us by revelation, it must now become the place we are putting our feet. So we are walking in that. Every time light is revealed, or every time light comes, or every time he shows us, or whatever he shows us, it is meant to be a step forward and not just something we sit back, look at, and say, wow, that's good. That's wonderful, wow. He's not wowing us, he's taking us forward. We are walking, we are going forward. So, we looked at the fact that there is a destiny, there's a goal. We saw that goal, we looked at that last week. And we climaxed last week by looking at how did he call us? How did he call us? Having looked at Romans 8 verse 29, whom he predestined, uh, those he called, how did he call us? So we looked at the purpose of God, the intent for that predestination, and um, that how did he call us? So we want to take up from here now. We want to take up from there. Those whom he knew in advance, those whom he knew in advance, whom he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ, that's the goal, he called them. He called them. So he foreknew them. He predestined them to be conform to the image of Jesus Christ. And the image of Jesus Christ is all that Jesus Christ represents. And please don't just hear image of Jesus Christ and leave it at that, as that. Understand it is that. But there's a depth to that. It is all that Jesus Christ represents, which is the fullness of God expressing who the Father is. So he foreknew, he foreknew, or knows in advance, and those he knew, he foreknew, he called. And this is not that he, sele he has selected some people from the other. Of course, God would choose different persons for specific assignment. But in this context, the foreknowing or the persons he foreknew is not some people, but this was re referring to all of humanity. It is that statement that says, let us make man in our image and our likeness, according to our likeness. It is that same statement that is mentioned here that he's referring to whom he foreknew and not just some people from other persons, but this is referring to all of humanity. So whom he foreknew, let's go back over that. Those whom he foreknew and see that as all of humanity, whom he has predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ, he called them. And hence the reason why the call of God that goes out in the earth is not to, is not to some people or persons, but to all of humanity. 
Way back then, I think it's through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord began to say, look to me all the ends of the earth. Look to me and be saved. This is an understanding that the call is to all of humanity. And so the giving of Jesus Christ in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world of humanity. These are the persons whom he foreknew. He sent Jesus Christ. And God was in Christ based on the revelation given to the apostle Paul. And he was seeking to reconcile the world unto himself, the world of humanity, not some persons. So when you hear those whom he foreknew, he was referring to all of humanity, all of humanity. So those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to Jesus Christ. Again, back to what Holy Spirit said to me in 1991, God's desire is for all of humanity to look like Jesus Christ, confirming everything that the apostles have said. Okay, so that's the goal. So he called them, he called them, he called humanity. And he put them in right standing with himself. But how did he call them? How did he call them and put them in right standing with himself? How did he do that? So before we go into that, Romans, uh, let's go straight into it. Romans chapter 8 and verse 30. Romans 8 and verse 30. We want to see here that he called. We're looking at the fact that he called them. And then after that, we'd look, we would look at how he called those persons. So to um, confirm the fact that he did call, and we're going to look at after this verse, how he called them. So Romans 8 and verse 30, from the NIV version, it says, And those he predestined, those he meaning God, the Father, those he predestined, or those, or those he chose, those whom he has chosen in advance, those whom he predestined or chosen in advance, he also called. So we want to re-emphasize that. He also called, meaning he has called them to come to him. The call is to himself. He called to himself. So again, those whom he knew in advance, he called, again repeating, meaning he has called those persons to come to him. The verse goes on to say, those he called, those he called, and what did they see? All of humanity, those he called, or having called them, having called them, he also, the scripture goes on to say, he also justified. So, he predestined, he called to himself, and those whom he called to himself, he justified. That is to say, he has made them or put them in right standing with himself. He justified them. No one can justify us but God. We can't justify ourselves before God. That's why the scripture said that we have been made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. So those whom he called, he justified. Meaning, he gave them right standing with him. So let's go back over this again. Those he called, he justified. He gave right standing with himself. Those he justified or having given them right standing with himself, he glorified. So I want to see that process. And this is the arrangement of God. 
he glorified the end result is he glorified them but what is the glory himself his life and it takes us back to what holy spirit said god wanted to fill us his intent is to fill us with himself and that is realized in jesus christ who is the fullness of god the father and who is the father's glory and so those whom he justified or put in right standing with him he also glorify meaning he give them his glory the end result it is amazing that all that god does he has an end result he does nothing without an end result and it is the method of god to take our work through a process but with us when god begin to move us through a process if we are not conscious that he has a goal in mind we end up camping in the process and not arriving to the destiny that he has in mind but to stay on course to get to the destiny we have to stay in the position of submission submissiveness obedience and constantly allowing the holy spirit to renew our mind as we go through the process but it's so wonderful to know that god has shown us the destiny and he's allowing us to understand that he's taking us through the process that would bring us to the goal that he has in mind so those whom he called those whom he has put right with himself through jesus christ he justified them put them right with himself then he glorified them glorify them but what does it really mean glorify at another time we would go into that some more to understand what you would want us to know inside of this because the glory is himself and the glory of himself is jesus not just in jesus it is jesus christ the scripture said that jesus is the brightness of the father's glory of the father's glory and the express image of his person the brightness of the father's glory so all of this is in jesus <laughs> is in jesus christ in jesus christ so when he tells us that the fullness of himself is in jesus christ or filling us with himself and that fullness of himself is jesus christ we are beginning to understand more so how important and valuable our master is and we cannot walk in the fullness of god by ignoring jesus christ because everything that is designed to complete us and fill us with god's desire for us is jesus christ simple but powerful and he wants us to understand that so master he gave us his glory and the glory is his life but let's go back but how did he call those whom he has chosen in advance to come to him how did he call them so there are those that there are those persons who say um thing like um i had a dream um and so i dream he was calling me to be saved there are those who would say well i'm waiting for a call what do you mean by waiting for a call but i'm waiting that he you know so that he will call me I, I, i'm not coming yet i wait until he called god is calling all of humanity every day his voice is echoing he's calling humanity how is he doing this the holy spirit gives us an understanding 
of that call, the nature of that call. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, from the NIV version, 2 Thessalonians, gives us, a, gives us an understanding of that. And it says, from the NIV version, But we ought to thank God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord. Because from the beginning, God chose you to be saved from the beginning. Watch this. God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one who sanctifies, sets us apart, pulls us away from the things that is not of God. The work of the Holy Spirit in us, sanctifying work, takes us away from the things that is not of God. So he's given an understanding as, as to the work of the Holy Spirit. So through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and through belief in the truth, you believing the truth of the message that is brought to you, you believe the truth, you choose to believe because believing is a choice. And through belief in the truth, Verse 14, this is a verse we're actually going, we're looking at. Verse 14, he called you, watch this now, he called you to this, how? Through our gospel. He called you to this through our gospel, meaning through the message of the gospel that we preach to you. The good news, the gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ. The good news of God's plan of salvation in Christ Jesus, which you choose to believe. So how does God, how did God call? Through the message of the gospel. He called through the message of the gospel. And so it goes on to say, verse 14, and that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He called you through the gospel that we preached to you. The message was a call to you to come, an invitation. Because he foreknew you and he has predestined you to take on this image of Jesus Christ where you would share in the glory of God or the life of God or being filled with God's presence, his person, his life. He called you to this, connecting to what he said in Genesis 1. Let, let, let's make man our image according to our likeness. He called you. This is the process. And so he just called you to give you something. We often say, um, I was created to worship. I don't know if we understand what that means. <laughs> we were created to be filled with God. We were created to, to have his life. So, so let, let's look at the last part of this verse that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is for all of us, every believer in Christ. Whether you're a pastor, prophet, apostle, just a believer in Christ, all of us. Not for some of us, all of us. Of course, I know we have different assignments. The Lord gives us specific assignment in the, in the earth, in the body of Christ to do specific things. But this is the goal for all of us. This is the intent of God, regardless of what those assignments are. The end goal is, this is how all of us individually will be. And this is superior to all our individual assignments in the earth. This is the intent. God don't have this for some of us. It's for all of us. Some of us have, as I, I repeat, specific assignment to do specific things. But this call or this end game 
or the purpose for which God has called us is superior to all the individual assignment that we have. This is the intent of God. That you might share in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God has called us through the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the purpose for which he has called us is to fill us with himself or as it is written to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ to share to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ is to participate in that glory or to have or possess that glory as ours Wow, saints. So he wants us to know this. So it is not just to go to heaven. And again, I repeat, if you die in Christ as a believer, that's where you will go. But it's much more than going to heaven. To share in his glory. To be filled with the life of God. That's why Holy Spirit is in us. He's not by the side of us. All of this is a part of this. He's doing his sanctifying work. Moving us away from everything that is not of God. Filling us. Increasing in greater quality of the life of God. So that we can manifest God. Because the glory of Jesus Christ sharing in the glory of Jesus Christ. The glory of Jesus Christ is the glory of the Father. It's not something that is separated from the Father. It is the life of the Father. It is the glory of the Father. The glory of the Father is Jesus Christ. And so, we are, have been predestined, have been called have been set in right standing with God through Jesus Christ to receive, to be filled with God's life, to share in the glory, to participate, to have as our possession. And the glory of Jesus Christ is the glory of the Father. The glory of the Father. According to the words of the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 from the New Living Translation. 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. And it says, In his kindness, who, who is his? God our Father. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal Glory, oh my God. <laughs> Not temporal glory. Eternal glory is eternal life. Holy Spirit said, Lemoth is, is like this. The glory of God is all that God is and does. It is not something that's abstract from or something that he just does. In a little piece of cloud floating around. The glory of God is who God is and what he does. So back to 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. From the New Living Translation. In his kindness, in his mercies. We didn't deserve this. Because of what our forefathers did. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory. How? How can we share in this? He tells us, by means of Jesus Christ. We share, and that's what he told us, that his fullness that he wants to fill us with is Jesus Christ. And this was his, his intent from the very beginning. 
This is what he wants. This is what he made us for. <laughs> to fill us with himself. And he calls it his glory because his glory is his life. And so I just shared, I just showed you from the scripture that the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ is the glory of the Father. We're sharing his glory. Let's go back to 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. In his kindness, in his kindness, in his kindness, God called you to share in his glory. How? How? By means of Jesus Christ. That's the means. In Jesus is his fullness. And his fullness in us would be as a result of us being conformed to Jesus Christ, who is the fullness. So you've been conformed to the fullness of God <laughs> in Christ Jesus, who fills us and in whom we are complete. So he wants us to see this. So the call is towards this end. So his glory, again, I want to repeat, refers to his life. His glory, God's glory, refers to his life, who he is and what he does. Throughout the scripture from Genesis to Revelation, when you talk about the glory of God, I said the cloud appeared and the glory of God, it was it's just what God did. It wasn't some cloud floating around by itself apart from God manifesting himself in all of these forms. When Jesus called forth Lazarus, he talked about showing forth the glory of God. It is the work of God. It was God's work, God's power, and it is referred to as his glory. It is his life. That is why it is said that Jesus Christ is the brightness of the Father's glory and the express image of his person. We're sharing in that. He made us for that. That's the end goal. All the work, all the process, all the things that he has done from Genesis all the way up, he had this in his mind. And we see in the wisdom of God, his plans always prevail. And he wanted us to see. When he tells us that he calls us to a life, he's given us an understanding as to what his intention was from the beginning. And Paul understood these things by the Holy Spirit. So, his glory refers to his life. The glory of God is who he is and what he does, says the Holy Spirit. He is the personification of glory. Personification means the person of glory. He is glory personified. He don't just do glorious things. He is that. He is that. So he is the personification of glory and his glory is revealed in Jesus Christ, the one who we have been conformed to. All of that is to say that there is where, or in Jesus Christ, his fullness resides and the completion of us to the desires of God is right there. It's not in religion. It's not in our good works that we do in ourselves by ourselves, which no real, real good works is done in ourselves by ourselves is what God does through us. We look at that at another time. So this is the end that he has in mind. And so, the goal for which he has chosen us in advance, called us to himself through the gospel, put us in right standing with himself through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, is to give us his glory, which is his life. And the life is eternal life. Back to that life. It's called his eternal glory. <laughs> it will never end. That's the destiny of us. Every believer in Christ. That's what we will share. 
the same life of the God who made the universe and all that it contains, our finite minds cannot begin to imagine the magnitude of what that is. That cannot be confined into organizations of men. It cannot be confined into or contained uh, in institutions that men uh, erect or established in themselves by themselves. Our natural mind cannot begin to fathom apart from the Holy Spirit, understanding the depth of what that is. <laughs> it is not just a little, little thing we do by the side or our little social club. or some man-made organizational structure. This is the intent of God. This is where we are going. This is our destiny. This is our point of arrival. This is God's desire. This is the intent of his heart. And all of his work in the earth, there's this plan of redemption leads towards this end all the giftings of the holy spirit all the office given to the church the raising up and the establishment of the body of christ the intent of god is to fill us with his glory fill us with his life and oh how he has simplified that to us we have a bright future every believer in christ we have something to rejoice about this is God's desire. No one asked him to do that. He is God. This is his desire. So all of which is accomplished in Jesus Christ. It is important also to note that before the creation of the world, God chose us to be holy. And we're going to look at that by itself at another time. But we're going to just look through this scripture reference and, 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 and understand how the Lord in advance arranged that all of this would be in Jesus Christ. And he hid it from all of humanity. And so when Paul, by the Holy Spirit, understood it, it was a mystery hidden. But now it's a revealed mystery. Because Holy Spirit has made it known. So Ephesians 1 and verse and verse 4 to 5. Before I go into that, what I began to say to you is that it, it is important to note, note that before the creation of the world, God chose us to be holy and to be his own children through Jesus Christ. He wanted children. But all of this would be done through Jesus Christ. His own children, of course, his children must have his DNA. But all of this must be done through Jesus Christ. And he wanted children and he wanted to fill those children with his, with his glory, with his life. All that he is. That his life will become our life. We have no other life. He is our life. There's no other life. Without him, it's just existence existence without the true essence of life but now in him all of us we have life his life is life but now that life must increase in us in greater quality that's the process of growth that brings that into fullness as a little child born into this world and goes through a process of growth that's how the life should be growing in us i told you that before we should be increasing in that greater quality of God's life because the journey we are on is taking us into that image of Christ or the fullness of God's life in Jesus Christ. And so if that's a journey, and it is, and we are growing or we are transitioning, meaning we are changing and looking more and more like what we're changing into, there must be manifestations of that in our attitude. We cannot remain the same and say we're changing. The same attitude, the same behavior, the same mentality, the same way of speaking, 
No. You can sing some songs and clap your hands and it's good. All of that is good. It has its place. But the real intent of God is a transformation that evidence itself in our attitude and behavior because we're changing into him. And if we're doing that, then what comes out of us, what others see when they interact with us has to be something that resemble God more and more like him. This is what he's after. This is why he's really driving this home because many of our brethren who gone on before have missed the core of what the Lord really want, wanted in the earth. And they have built systems but excluded the intent of God. And they had a good happy time as they would say. But the intent was not pierced through. and look into and unfold in our teaching and prophesying and preaching and living. And now he calls us, I'm blowing a trumpet. I'm releasing a prophetic song. It is my message to the church community, to the body of Christ. Is the office that has been given to me in this specific assignment I have been given to the church community. We have to get back on the path. And I thank him for showing me a few weeks ago that multitudes are beginning to journey because I'm not the only voice releasing the song, there are others. And so it is catching on in certain quarters within our community. But those persons who are trumpeting that song have faced um, fierce resistance by the wicked one and false religious system that we quickly attach ourselves to because it appeases us and it plays upon our carnal desires and makes us comfortable in a place of nothingness. And so when the sound of the Lord is released for transformation to move us forward in the further purposes of God, we see that as something far-fetched from us. And we don't want to be challenged. We want to sit in a place of Jetla, nowhere, a place that, that takes you nowhere. Ziklag. I think I got it right. God wants us to move forward. This is the intent of God. When I saw that, and of course, having heard that in 991, and understand that that was the intent of God, and over the process of time, when he began to walk me through in my own individual journey, when he hid me from others, from the eyes of others, they didn't know where I was. And we're not hearing on the radio. You're still in ministry? Where you? <laughs> Sometimes I just wanted to laugh, you know. I wanted to laugh so loud, they probably would have gotten scared. In my heart, I was just like shaking my head, Lord, they don't know. They think all of it was just hearing you on the radio. It's God hid me. Because he didn't want me to be a part of the foolishness that was going on, that seemed like movement taking place. And in that process of the wilderness journey, he was teaching me through my own personal experiences and giving me understanding of what he has assigned me to do in the earth. And he kept on showing me and giving me further understanding of the picture that he showed me in 1991, in the process that he was walking me through while others couldn't find me. And they thought I was a thing of the past. <laughs> the great wisdom of God amazes us. He has ways of hiding you. When you are designed for a purpose in the earth, God has ways of hiding you so that you don't become contaminated by foolishness. Now that he has opened my eyes to see further understanding and further depth of his intent, and he continues to give further understanding, now he wants the whole community to know where he's leading, where he's taking us. What is the reason for which all the gifts were given? Why he formed a body called the church? Why the whole concept of the kingdom of God and kingdom mentality is breathed into the earth? One intent of God to fill us with himself. 
to give us his glory to fill us with himself to fill us with himself so and in his wisdom he has arranged you know when i see these things i'm amazed at the awesome wisdom of god in his planning and unless he tells you you have no way of knowing we can just assume so here in ephesians 1 and verse verse 4 to 5 it says even before he made the world before <laughs> ephesians 1 verse 4 and 5 from the new living translation even before he made the world before both the natural world that we can see and the invisible world and all that the both worlds contain before god loved us <laughs> the intent of he loved us and chose us in christ in jesus christ all the chosen is in christ shows us in christ to be holy so we we'll look at that at another time to be holy and without fault in his eyes to be holy and without fault in his eyes verse 5 he decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. He decided in advance to bring us. So he, 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 he already arranged how he's going to bring us to himself. That's why the apostle Paul said, again, God was in Christ, reconciling, reconciling the world unto himself through the message, through the demonstration of the power of God. through Jesus Christ. This was his plan before human being was made, before he made human being in the earth. Before Adam and Eve was created, before they fell, <laughs> before he made the worlds, includes everything that was in the world. Mystery. <laughs> It's amazing. Let's go back to verse 5. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. All of it is through Jesus Christ. That's what he told me when I said, Lord, help me that I don't go wrong and he says as long as you keep Jesus Christ as a template you would not deviate you'd not go into error Jesus because saints just today I was thinking about this I've cried out to the Lord on your behalf you don't you have no idea these are things that you don't know unless I tell you or unless Holy Spirit tells you but my cry was, Lord, I'm looking at your people. I, I watched it on television. I watch, I go, so I travel and minister. I see how you've been ah. Uh, I see the way we project ourselves over you as God's children. I see the way that we how we did how we did not value the grace and understand the purpose for which the grace has been given. I saw how, oh, I, I, it, so much. And I said, Lord, your children need to know what you have said. What is the way to you? They don't have to go through all of this, 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 give these gimmicks and these gymnastics and being treated all of, in all of this, these kind of ways. Lord, 
help me to help them to see what you want them to see. That they don't have to pay for it. That they, that they don't have to be manipulated to get access to it. This is the intent of your heart. This is what you want. Forgive us. Forgive our brethren for the way they've prostituted the grace that is the intent for this purpose. To open their eyes and to show them that they, will, they don't come, become dependent on us, but dependent on you having seen what the walk is all about and, have, and pointing them to you that they will begin to yield to the Holy Spirit who is in them and walk in the truth. And that we all will see together, we all will see together and arrive at the same destination, which is the intent of God. I can't go into, I can't go into detail in all the things that I've said to God. I, I, was a, I was tempted to do so, but I felt the Holy Spirit restraining me. And so there's a reason for that. And I count it an honor and a privilege to be able to do so along with the house of Friends of Jesus International. All those who are standing with me, we're standing together, blowing this trumpet to our community. And having been taken by the Lord into seasons of molding and fashioning and perfecting the message that he has given me to release in those periods of time. All of which was arranged. There's some things like I said, of my own making, but there are other things that I, I could not get away from the process because it was designed for a particular purpose. I understood those things after. The amazing work of God, people, he is amazing in his, in his, in his work. <laughs> he is amazing. He's doing things under your nose that you're not aware of until he tells you. Amazing. He's working his plan out in the earth. Great is the work of God in the midst of us. This is an awesome wisdom through which the universe was made and all that it contains. The wisdom of our Father, the greatness of God. Having come to the place to look back, to look from hindsight and see the act and the work of God and the great wisdom in all that He did is amazing to see. But He has one goal in mind. And He wants us to see that. And this is for every believer in Christ. So don't think, well, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not on radio, I'm not on TV, I'm not, I'm not as important. You are. You are as valuable as any other person. And if you can receive this, you are greater than all the prophets who ever lived. Every believer in Christ all the prophets who ever walked the earth, Moses and all of them, you're greater than all of them. Every believer in Christ. What are you saying? Greater than Moses. I know you got shocked. I know, I know, I know. You got shocked, man. That's good. The shock is needed. <laughs> he said, but what do you mean? Explain. I, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Jesus spoke concerning John the Baptist, who was a prophet, a forerunner. And Jesus said, considering John, after he was killed, that there was none greater than John. He said some other things about him, but he said, there was none greater, no one born from a woman that was greater than John. No one, none, no human being, no prophet, nobody. But then he said, the least in the kingdom is greater than he. The least in the kingdom, and he was not referring to himself. But who's the least? Those who are considered to be the least. He's not saying some is less and some is more, but he wanted to illustrate the least in the kingdom is greater than he. So if there's no person born from a woman greater than John the Baptist, so he's greater than all. 
and the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist, then the least in the kingdom is greater than all the prophets, everybody who has ever been born. That's what I meant. If you're willing to receive that. The truth makes you free. It don't just set you free. It's a process. It makes you free. There's a difference between being set free and being made free. It's making us. The process is, do, is doing that. So, sharing his glory is for all of us. Every believer in Jesus Christ. All of us. And God decided that in Jesus, his family would be called. His children would be called. His fullness would be imparted to us in Jesus Christ. His glory, which is his life, eternal life, would be given to us in Jesus Christ. He decided that. Now, having decided that, having planned it out, how can anyone else access the fullness of God or the life of God or anything of God outside of Jesus Christ? You just can't. So we have to tell them. It is only in Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other person. So think of the thousands and the hundreds of thousands of persons who are going astray or have strayed. Being sincere but sincerely wrong. Going after what they think is God through others and missing the mark because they choose not to come to God through Jesus Christ. And we have a responsibility to let that be known. God is calling all humanity in Christ Jesus through the message of the gospel. So you wanted a family and it is it's important for us to see this. At another time, we would look at what the holy calling is all about. And though you would have gotten some wind of that, we would look into it some more so that you, we understand um, what is expected of us having been established holy in Christ, what is ex expected of us. We're going to look at that at another time. But I wanted, I wanted you to see that in advance, God arranged how all of this is going to happen in Jesus Christ. All of it in Jesus. You can't take Jesus out of the picture when dealing with God, the ways of God, the way of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God. Jesus Christ embodies all of that. All of that. And he wants us to see that. So God has revealed Jesus Christ as the fullness of himself, concluded now. God has revealed Jesus Christ as the fullness of himself to us so that in Jesus Christ he can be revealed in his fullness through us when I heard Holy Spirit said that I thought I said I thought wow Lord just I need to hear that again I thank the Lord for phones you can write quicker you know so this is what he said God has revealed Jesus Christ as his fullness, as the fullness of himself to us so that in Jesus Christ he can be revealed in his fullness in us and through us. And the Apostle Paul described his own calling in that way. Galatians 1, verse 15 and 16. But when he, Paul, from the Amplified Version, but when he, that is God, but when he, God, who had chosen and set me apart even before I was born, Paul, <laughs> even before I was born, and had called me by his grace, his grace meaning his undeserved favor and blessings. Saw fit, saw fit 
we get into the part here now saw fit and was pleased verse 16 now to reveal to reveal meaning to unveil the amplified version to unveil to disclose his son within me so that I can proclaim him among the Gentiles. So he's called me to reveal his son. He chose me before I was born to reveal his son within me. But Paul, what do you mean reveal his son? All that the son contains, the fullness of God, the glory of God, to reveal him in me. So Jesus was revealed to him on the road to Damascus to be revealed in him and through him. Could this be the reason why he said, I live yet not I, but Christ live in me and the life that I live in this flesh or this body, I live by the faith of the son of God. So that's what, that's what I meant earlier. What Holy Spirit has said to us earlier. So he revealed Jesus to us as his fullness. To us. To be his fullness in us and through us. And Paul said, he has revealed Jesus. Before I was born, he chose me. And of course, having chosen him, he called him. And he was, of, of course, referring to his apostolic grace, but also in a, in a general sense, the grace of God that brought him to salvation. To reveal himself in me. Himself is his, Jesus Christ, that is, is the fullness of God. He's revealed to us as the fullness of God to us to be the fullness of God in us and be released through us. <laughs> We're going to stop here for tonight. We're going to stop here for tonight. And so the proclamation of Jesus Christ that the Apostle Paul gave reference to, to the Gentiles, and of course to the Jews, and by extension, well, Gentiles mean those who are non-Jews, to all the Church of Jesus Christ, was not just a, pro a proclamation in words, but in all that he did. He proclaimed him both in words and deeds. And for us who are on this glorious journey, we've seen the end of it in terms of where we are going. God is pleased to give us his glory. Fill us with himself. So there's nothing wrong for us as a father. Thank you for filling me with yourself. Thank you for the process that you have designed. You planned it before the world began. Teach me how to walk consistently in the process, in the path. How to yield myself to the process. How to engage in the process of this journey to get to the point of arrival. Teach me how to be consistent and to experience the increasing quality of your life in and through me. And this is it, saints. This is where we are going. So when you understand this, you don't just talk about my ministry. And there's nothing wrong saying that, but the goal must not be my ministry. This is coming to me, so I felt like the Lord wanted to say it. I remember I was had a conversation with someone who came to see me, a minister. I was abroad ministering, and they came to the hotel where I was and the entourage from the assembly. And I was asking a few questions because I felt like Holy Spirit wanted to bring something to the, the person's attention. So I asked... Um, 
So what has been? What is the Lord saying to you? What 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 is He saying to you? Oh no, I ask. What is your desire? What do you desire from the Lord? And the person said, oh, I want to see the whole church full with people, people getting saved, and full of the church. So I was listening, as He has taught me, to listen and listen. I was listening to what is being said. But I was also hearing what is not being said. But is it I, you know, so that people will see me and how much people I have in the church filled with people. And I listened and my heart was grieved. Actually, let me rephrase that. The Holy Spirit was grieved inside of me. And when the person was through, I began to share what the intent of God is. I had to say there, even along with the, with the entourage came with that individual because they needed to hear it as well. And I began to share what the intent of the Lord is, what he really wants. Then the people <laughs> began crying one after the next. They began to weep. They begin to cry. The people felt the heart of God. And they began to weep. And then the, 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 the senior person just bowed their head. This is not me trying to bash you. And I didn't say it in any way for that intention. But Holy Spirit compelled me to make known what is the intent of God. And why he has brought these people in your space. And the person left after we finished, I pray with them and they left. The entourage, they left weeping. The person left, I can, I can feel the, but it was necessary. Because the Lord wanted to break the mindset because you put on these televisions and see these people carrying on with their gymnastics and think this is pleasing to God. So you want to be a part of that as well. Because it looked good. So it seems. But look good to whom? See, I tell people, I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> Glory to God. And I'm not here to, 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 to beg you for your money. If you choose to give it, you choose not to give it, God will, God will bless me. He will provide. I'm not here to do some scheme to try to see how much of your money I can get. I'm here to do one thing. To show you the path that the Lord has made clear to me. To tell you, this is the road. This is the intent of God. This is what he wants. This is what he's leading you into. And this is my assignment. And he has filled my heart with it. And it's a joy for me to do that. And so, my brethren, don't be a part of this gymnastics. Journey with the multitude who are allowing the Holy Spirit to bring about the change that is needed. Let your minds be renewed by the word of God. Let there be death to your old carnal nature with all its desires. And let the desire of the Lord fill your heart and mind so that His agenda be your agenda. His perspectives on everything will be your perspective on all things. His will will be your will, that you have not a will but His. You desire nothing else because it is his life we're supposed to live. There's no other. It's his. We have no life apart from him. This is what it is. He tells us, he told us, I want to deliver the people from an event mentality to a sustained God-like quality of life sustained from an event 
mentality. This event finished, prepare for the next event, event and event and events and events. To just living the way he wants us to. For this reason, I am before you saying the things that he has shown me. So, meditate on what you've heard. And let us go on to perfection. To be all that God has designed us to be. Amen. Let's do this. We can. We have what it takes. Our Father has equipped us. Let's do this for the glory of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Word of God. We have all the saints of heaven standing with us. We have angels assigned to protect us. We are covered. We have our Father who knows all things, sees all things. He is the power. Don't be scared, well, the devil is doing this, or this obi man. Don't be, scared. Don't, don't be afraid of him. Or that. Don't be afraid of that. Jesus Christ <laughs> has given us authority over him and all of his imps and all of his agents and agencies. No power can withstand the master. None. So you know what time it is then. Glory to God. <laughs> you know what time it is, right? You know what time it is. This is who we are. We represent him. He wants us to present him accurately. Represent him. At the same time, we are not ignorant of the devices of the wicked one. Through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, he teaches us how to navigate away from the snares of the wicked one. And keep the wicked one's kingdom where it belongs. Defeated. That's where our master placed it. It's defeated. And let him be defeated in our lives. Amen. So you know what time it is. Glory to God. <laughs> I like that one. You know what time it is. Yeah. You know what's up. Glory to God. You know what's up. So let us arise and shine for the light has come. Let's blow the trumpet. And friends of Jesus International, thank God for you. Thank God for all of you. Glory to God. Especially those of you who have been with me for all these years. Through the wilderness and the desert and the hills and the valley and all the difficult places. You believe in what you saw. You believe in what you heard. You stood your grounds. Today we are standing here by the grace of God. Trumpet in the sound. Blessed be the name of our God. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you joining us on the platform, it's an honor to share with you all that God has given to us to make known to his precious people all across the earth. And what has been said is accessible to you. It's yours. Just click in all the messages, all the teachings, they're there. You don't have to pay for them. They're right there. You don't have to join a club and get, put all your special your name and all of these things and, and pin number to get access to them. That's what some of us have done. You don't have to do that. Just log in and it's there. Okay? Just log in and it's there. Blessed be God. <laughs> we don't want to own what is his. It's his and it's for you. All things are yours. <laughs> Glory to God. It's yours. Whether apostles, prophet, all things are yours. As it is written. For your development, for your advancement. God bless you. And... Um, Praise God. So pray for me. What, what should I pray for? That I be delivered from unreasonable men because all men doesn't have faith. And I fought with some beasts. This is not Ephesus. This is Trinidad. <laughs> Glory to God. And so um, beasts in, in terms of mentality of people and views that have been, have been induced by the wicked one that all eyes will be opened 
and all those who are passionate for God, we all will connect. And all those who love God and all those who are God-fearing would connect and we will journey together with God and advance the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ in the earth. God bless you. Peace of God rest with you. See you again next week. Uh, Saturday, we had a wonderful time. Glory to God. And those who, who weren't afraid to come out, just shout. I have not done that in a long time. Uh, my voice was, was a little bit hoarse last night. I just wanted to shout the praises of God to the top of my voice. Glory to God. And it is wonderful. And so it's an honor. Again, thank you, saints. God bless you. Have a wonderful night rest. And don't forget to join us uh, tomorrow at 99.5. 99 That's it, yeah? 99.5 at 5 from 5 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. And um, as we release God's voice to the nation, that's Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and the Tuesdays and Thursdays, here we, we are here. The, the team will be here to minister to you. And I'm hearing these testimonies that is coming in and what the Lord is doing in these lives. And I want to thank all the, the people who, who comes in the stream and you're praying. I can feel that connectedness praying for those who have been ministered on. It's a really a wonderful thing. God is doing something really mighty in the midst of his community. And um, may he give you discernment to know what is of him and so that you can flow in the vein of the Spirit of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Get some rest. And I'll be connecting with you again next week, the Lord's willing. Again, Tuesdays, 7.45. And Thursday, 7.45, the team will be here ministering. And um, we just want to give. We want to give. All that he gives to us is yours. All that he has given to us is for you. And we want to give what he has given to us. 